One of the first features we may utilize when getting started with Huddle Sports Code is creating a code window so that we can create the types of clips and the types of details, which we call labels, so that we can have all the clips we need and details on these clips. To get started creating a code window, we can go up to the File menu here and go New Code Window. This will open up a blank window as we see here, where now we can start to design the code window in the form that we wish to. Before we get started, we first want to look at the modes we have here. Currently we are in an edit mode, and edit mode is what is going to allow us to design our clips and our labels in the order and the manner that we wish to. Once we've finished designing our code window or making changes to it, we'll utilize code mode to actually start clipping on a timeline that we have handy. For those in a live capture setting, you may also utilize capture mode, which I'll demonstrate in a second here. The other two modes, which you can find future videos discussing these topics, are in label mode, which allows us to add further detail to clips we've already created, and report mode, which allows us to use the scripting, fu scripting functionality of sports code to create outputs. Now you might have seen I mentioned the difference between capture and code mode. In a live capture setting, such as this capture that I can start right now, when I have a code window built out with a code such as this, capture mode is going to work similar to code mode, but it's going to do it as the video is being recorded in this capture window. So if I activate this code right now, you can see that the clip was created at the end of the timeline as it was being created in our timeline. But for some users, they may prefer to be behind in the video they are capturing, so they can still utilize code mode and go at their own pace looking at this video window down here. Now to backtrack, let's go back to edit mode and start to create a few examples. To create our first code button, all we have to do is drag out a button here. You can see we can use the bounding boxes to resize it as we need to. And then we can double click to open up our inspector for this button. The inspector is just the settings of this button, and you'll see we have a number of options in here on how we can customize this button to the way we wish. In this case, I'm going to create my first code of offense. And now as it stands now, when I want to start using this clip, I would have to click the button to start it and click to stop it. But for many of us, we may choose that we want to use a key on our keyboard to do the same process. This is where the hotkey option comes into play. So the hotkey will allow me to choose a key on my keyboard so that any time I'd like to start and stop this clip, I can use that key. In my past, I like to use O for offense, and so I can just click in here to type O as my hotkey. Now as you start to make more and more codes, you may ask yourself, well, I want to have my hotkey shown on my button so that I don't have to remember all of them. And so under the second tab, which we call the appearance tab, this is where I can go down and do show hotkey, and now that hotkey will appear on my button. From there, we can create our second example. And so I did command C, command V to copy and paste our button. And now we can create our defense and I can go in and do a hotkey of P, as I always like to have my hotkeys right next to each other for my possession clips. And now you'll notice that because I copied the button, I do not have to go do show hotkey again, because that setting was remembered and saved. Now the third example we may have is instead of doing a clip like a possession, we may do an event style clip, such as a, sh such as a shot on goal, or a shot in a game. 
And so one additional feature we can utilize is if I have a hotkey and a code of S for shot, I may know leading into that shot how many seconds I want to see going into the moment and how many seconds I want to see after to see the result of it. Utilizing the lead and lag features, this is where I can go in and choose exactly how I may want that clip to be generated automatically. And so for example, I may want to see the five seconds before the shot, which is what I would set for lead, and the three seconds after, which is what I would set for lag. And so now I know anytime I click S, it's going to create an eight second clip around that moment. Now that we have those three examples, let's create our first label. And so now we can drag out a label button. And now we can open up our inspector and see that the label inspector looks a little bit different because we're no longer worried about making clips, but these are details that we may want to have on those clips. Within the inspector, you may notice that not only do we have a place to name this button, but also a group option. And so the case, in this case, we'll do for basketball. I always like to have a label for whether it was a half court possession or a transition possession. But when I go looking in other areas of sports code for these labels later, such as the matrix or the find window, I'm going to want to stay organized so that I can find those specific labels quickly and groups would allow me to do so. And so in, the, in this example of half court and transition, I liked having both labels in a group play type. Now I can set a hotkey of H if I'd like and go to my appearance tab to do show hotkey again. And then I can duplicate this button and now create my transition example with a hotkey of T. Now that we have a few examples here, we can save this code window and use it at any time on any film, whether it be one we're capturing or one we already have finished in a timeline. And so now to see these in action, we can switch to code mode you'll see that our video timeline has already started playing. And so I can reorganize my space, take a look at my video, and now you'll see I can click O for offense, and these activation symbols let me know that I am currently creating a clip. I can then at any time add the label I'd like, and then finish my clip and switch to the next possession. And then as for our shot clip with lead and lag, you'll see I don't have to start and stop my clip. I can click S at any time, and it's going to generate that clip automatically. You'll also note that there is a red outline around the last clip that you have just generated. This is actually indicating to you that you can still label that previous clip until you generate or until you start your next clip. And now that we have a few examples, we can see when I zoom in on my timeline, I have clips created in each row. And when I put my cursor on them, I can see those labels that I have applied.